Good afternoon YouTubers, Skipper T here. Lately I've been getting a lot of questions from family, friends, co-workers about how we set up our cars with, well at this point in time, wintertime survival equipment um, or just good old fashioned Boy Scout, you know, be ready for anything stuff in our cars. Today I'm going to show you what I've put in my wife's car. Uh, basically I have the exact same thing in my car, the only difference is, is I put everything in an Alice pack versus the way that we have this one configured. First of all, H2O, water. There's 10 bottles of water in here, they're the 20 ounce bottles. We get them at the Sam's Club, just put them in an old piece of old cardboard box from somebody sending us presents to the front doorstep and uh, beefed it up with a little 100 mile an hour duct tape and uh, so she's always got at least 10 bottles of water, a couple hundred ounces worth of water in the car with her at any given time. This time of year we carry a uh, Tupperware type Rubbermaid storage bin. Inside this one she basically has winter boots. They're cam kicks, camics I should say. Um, we call them the mini pearls since she hasn't taken the tags off of them yet. Um, she has tested them, she has worn them. They've got the big felt liner on the inside. I don't know if you can see that right here, but boy, that'll keep your feet nice and warm. You can pull it out. Um, you know, there's a lot of air movement inside there, but that felt and a decent pair of socks, you can really get into some deep snow with that. So she keeps this set of boots in there. She also has a set of hiking boots, um, and she works in the in the office world during the day, so she has tennis shoes and various other shoes that she wears. But if she had to get out of the car and take a hike somewhere, come, you know, rain, snow, winter, whatever, she can start off in these. She can carry the snow boots with her because they're a lot lighter. But anyway, good feet protection, solid, sturdy shoe is an absolute necessity. Also in here, we've got extra hat. She's got an extra set of gloves. She carries gloves in, in the main compartment in her car. These we All this we keep in the back. She drives an SUV. She's got a set of coveralls that I had for years. They're quilted um, and they fit real good and they're nice and warm but she's got an extra layer of protection come what may with the weather that's that we may have to deal with at any given time on that. So this rides in the back primarily in the winter time just because of the, the nature of the gear that's in it. Um, in the summertime she would still keep and maintain it with her um, uh, with her boots that are in there so that she's always got a sturdy pair of shoes if she ever has to get out and finish the journey home or she's in a situation where she needs to get away from her vehicle she can do so she can do it on, on solid footing absolute necessity this one here next she carries a sleeping bag now this is um, the black military stuff sack we have modeled this particular sleeping bag system off of the military, uh, I think it's called the Military Modular Sleep System. It's either the MMS or the MSS. Anyway, compresses down into this. There's a Gore-Tex bivy cover. Uh, it actually has the Woodland Camo on it. And inside of that, she has three other sleeping bags. I've recently taken this exact same configuration that I had on my pack, and I went ahead and got the... Um, military patrol and intermediate weather bags and then those snap right into the into the Gore-Tex bivvies. Those are all military issue. Both the bivvies that she has and that I have um, are both the, the military issue Gore-Tex. I'm not going to open this up because it's a pain in the ass to stuff it back inside but this is the exact same sleeping bag system. Um, it just is, This is the one that came out of mine when I moved to the military system. Got a good old-fashioned Coleman, probably 30 degree bag. It's got a real soft interior in it. Um, inside of that is the Lufama. I think I'm saying that right. Um, Extreme 700 Extra Large. This is supposed. This is a one pound, supposedly good down to 35 degree sleeping bag. I tested it in rainy, cold weather at about 45 and like to freeze my butt off. Um, so I don't believe it's a true 35 degree bag. But it only weighs a pound, it's lightweight, it's a synthetic fill on it, um, fits nicely inside this Coleman sleeping bag. Down inside of that then, we have a fleece sleeping bag, um, and that's just designed to keep this material a little warmer in the winter time. Uh, when it's up against your skin, it also helps to wick away moisture and such when you're in your sleeping bag, and of course it'll pass right through this one because they're designed to exit the moisture out. Um, it's probably going to catch in this one a little bit, but again, now you've got three layers, plus you've got the Gore-Tex bivy cover that goes over the top. 
This particular sleep system, I would say, would probably take you down into the below zero temperatures. Um, you probably aren't going to get a full eight hours sleep in this in comfort, but if you can get four to six, you're going to be well rested for any other adventure or activity you may have to do if you find yourself in a situation where you need to use that. Another item that she keeps in her car is just a cheap machete. Um, you can see where I've taken it through a couple of logs in the backyard, just testing to ensure that it could be batoned through. Um, the reason I say that is, you know, you can put it on a three, four inch log, take, you, take another log, you can pound it down through it, and you can turn round logs into cube, or well, quarters or halves, which will burn better on a fire should you have to make yourself a fire. So we just keep this in here. Yes, you could use it for personal protection, but, you know, in modern times, we're not really swordsmen, so this is more of a utility. Chop small branches down, um, do that kind of thing, because we don't have, in this particular kit, a really strong, really full tang type survival knife. So this is going to take up some of the load of splitting wood, processing wood, getting things squared away if she has to get into a situation where she might need to build a fire or, or take cover or move, you know, further down the road or, you know, she's out in the middle of nowhere, spend the night and be comfortable because the car can be extremely uncomfortable in long periods of time. The other thing she carries in her car, which is a recent addition, is a Mora knife. These are Swedish woodworking knives. Um, they come in a plastic sheath. It's got just a nice blade to it, and it's actually 3 and 5 16 inches long. I measured it, so just shy of 4 inches. It comes in a carbon steel blade. It comes very sharp. Um, I got this basically, I, I believe I ordered these from Amazon. Um, you have to be real careful again because, man, these things are super sharp. It is a three-quarter tang, comes to about back here. Um, when you look at it underneath of the handle, so to speak, the handle is a solid. It's got to be a polymer plastic of some kind because I drilled the hole in and added the lanyard to it. One of the reasons I did that was because I just didn't care for the way it's just snugged right into the right into the handle itself. So I wanted a way where I could wrap a couple fingers around it, still control it, and still remove it from the sheath easily and quickly. On the outside of the sheath, I took a 1.5 to 1.75 inch mountain bike tire, inner tube tire, and I cut it into one long piece and one short piece. I slid the long piece over top of the sheath itself. It fits. You got to you got to kind of pull it and tug on it a little bit, but it works nicely. And then I ran the shorter piece right up over the top of it. And what I do then is I put this ferrocium rod in here, and this is a fire striking rod. Um, the rod itself, when I when I bought the packages, came with this little striker that's that I've hidden under the back panel here. You can almost see the outline of it in the rubber. Um, and I keep that as a spare. Our primary source of being able to strike that fire and create a spark is going to come off of the back side of this knife. Maybe. There we go got to get the protective coating off first. And once you do that, boy, she'll start to throw some spark. There we go. Had the angle of the blade wrong. Okay. These sparks come off of there at 3,000 degrees. So, yes, you can use this to start a fire. Um, you can see right here a little bit where it's shining. You have to take that black protective coating off. Of course, they will have that in shipping so it doesn't start anything. But once you get through it and you get into this silver part, she will throw some sparks. Yes, it can be unwrapped. It can be taken out so that you can strike down or actually, you know, pull back this way um, and direct the spark into the fire if you're making it. So this is a pretty handy little thing um, that she'll carry with her that supplements then along with the machete. Now she has the ability to basically process wood so she can start a fire at any given time. So that goes with her everywhere she goes as well. The other thing we carry in the back of her car is a backpack. This backpack probably weighs 17, 18 pounds. Yes, I've adorned it with a bunch of just cheap carabiners uh, that we got from Harbor Freight. They're just a great way to tie off line and cordage to various things. You want to hang something, if there's a small branch, you want to hang up something, a towel, whatever. You can hook it over these things. These are not repelling, these are not climbing carabiners, these are just cheap carabiners that you can use to hoist and maybe keep your gear up off the ground, wrap it around your backpack, hoist it up on some cordage so that you know that it's not on the ground and susceptible to anything that may be on the ground. 
On this particular pack, I have all the zippers going off to one side. And the reason I've got that, with the exception of the, the back panels here, the reason I have it set up like that is because now nothing interferes with this particular outside pocket. In this outside pocket, we have a fire starting station. In that fire starting station, we have a couple of tins. This tin is filled with moisture laden or uh, Vaseline soaked cotton balls. Um, we were doing some experiments with them. We were melting the melting down the Vaseline, dunking the cotton balls in them. Some of them got a lot more than the other ones did on it. But either way, you'd be able to pull those apart, expose the dry filaments in the center, strike that fire start on, on it, and because this is a petroleum-based product, one cotton ball will burn for about seven minutes. It's kind of an amazing thing. So she has a tin full of those so that she's always got a way to start fire. In this tin here, tinder. We also have a magnesium fire starting rod on that. Oop, get some of that out of there. She's got a striker. Again, it has the same type of striker, that ferrocium rod that the other one had. She can also trim the magnesium off of the back side of this, start the spark. But more importantly, she has a tin full of dry tinder. And folks, this is just dryer lint. It is extremely combustible. You can pull chunks of it out. You can open it up like that. You can set it, wrap it around one of your Vaseline covered um, cotton balls, you strike that fire in, in it, the spark's going to make a fire. As soon as that fire starts, the Vaseline catches on fire. Now again, you've got seven minutes or so that you can put small leaves, twigs, whatever on there, and that is an excellent way to get your fire started. If you absolutely have to, you can use two cotton balls, twice the burning. Um, if you do them consecutively, you get twice the heat and the flame if you do them at the same time. We also carry three mini BIC lighters because, you know, why strike the fire striker if you can flick your BIC? Um, you know, straight out, that might be a good way to do it. If it gets down to cold and below zero, sometimes these don't work and you have to have that fire starter or that the ability to create a spark. And that spark will ignite the cotton balls with the Vaseline on it all by itself. It'll, it will strike and light this all by itself. Combine the two of these together and you've got a nice little hot fire that you can start to get a decent sustainable heating fire going in a short period of time. On the outside pocket on the top here, we've got just a cheapo pair of binoculars. They work good. We've kept them on our back window sill for a long time. They fold out like anything else, a little cleaning tab. You can adjust the focus on them. This is great. You can see four, five, six miles with something like this. Doesn't make the image super large, but at least it can magnify it. You can see over, well, not over the horizon, but you can see out to the horizon what's coming your way. Basically, that pocket then is kind of all by itself and emptied. The next pack down, again, we're starting with those zippers on the side. And we're coming off this way. We fold this back. Now we've got food, okay? So basically we got a couple of items. We've got a headlamp that's out there. Always has a battery on it. And I keep um, on the outside of her uh, first aid kit, keep a couple extra batteries in there that shows she always has access to light with that. Here we have a backpacker's Kung Pao chicken with rice with chicken. So all she's got to do is take one of those water bottles, boil some water, tear the top off, open this up, Pour the water in, wait 10 or 15 minutes to it to rehydrate, and she's got a nice hot meal available to her. She has two packages of instant oatmeal in here. Got to have something to start the morning, and I don't know that Kung Pao chicken is a good breakfast food. So we've got some bananas and cream, blueberries and cream, you know, peaches and cream. Let's start the day off on a good note with a little bit of flavor and a little bit of fun, because if you're down to the point where you're utilizing this as, as a food source, it, morale is going to be huge, and that's a great way to start the day. Oh my goodness, look at that. She's also got a couple of ramen noodles packages in here. You know, it's just calories, people. It's not a gourmet meal. It's not something that you're going to, well, you're betting your life on it, but this pack is designed to get you somewhere where you have greater chances, greater survivability, sustainability, um, all the terms everybody uses that are out there. And here's just a couple of meals to help her on her way. We do have a can of Sterno, we'll explain that in a minute. We've got some paper towels in here, because you never know, you can also use them as fire starter. She's got my old military <laughs> knife, spoon, and fork, and I have one just like this in, 
in my car, um, you know, obviously a man and a woman's got to eat. And here's the utensils by which you can do that. We've got a few zip ties back here. You just never know when you might need a zip tie. We also have the old church key so that she can open up her sterno can here. Let's see. Down in the bottom. Kraft macaroni and cheese. It's a staple in the world today, ladies and gentlemen. One of my favorite foods. And all we did was we took it out of the box that it came in. I bought a case of these. We took it out of the box. I put it in the food saver. I, you know, I just vacuumed out all the air and everything. So it's got the pouch in it. It's got the rice or the pasta in it. Again, very simple meal that you, all you have to do is boil water to make this something that you can eat. By the way, the Kung Pao chicken actually has two large servings in it. So in theory, you could just scoop half of it out, pour half of it out into another baggie to save it for later, and you could have a couple of meals off of this. If you meet somebody on the trail and you want to share food, there's another one. Oh, look at that. Hidden clear in the bottom. Another macaroni and cheese. This is a 72-hour bag, but if you played your cards right, you could go out to five days pretty simply, pretty easily. Up here in the super secret zipper pocket, we have... Oh, that's the sunglasses that are, or the binoculars that are out there. Two small straps with buckles on them, okay? And these straps, just so if, if she wants to tie her sleeping bag off and sling it over her shoulder, if she wants to wrap it around the backpack or suspend it from the handle or something, at least she's got a strap she can do other things with. Very simple, just pull it, you know, just it's just your basic buckle. This, God, there's a thousand and one uses for this. And she has two of them. Also up in here, just for grins, she's got a few more of the carabiners and just in the larger sizes that were a little bit too big and frankly ran out of room on the outside. So we've got those stuffed down inside there pretty nice. Nice. She's also got a pen, ballpoint pen, and a pencil. You never know. You might want to leave a note. You might want to talk. You could use your newspaper to leave a message for somebody coming down the trail like me looking for her if something like this becomes a necessity. I'm not going to wait at home for her. I'm coming after her. So she could leave me a note. She could leave me a message. The next pocket that we've got here has got some other interesting stuff in it. Ha ha! The number one survival item anywhere in any pack would be the ability to keep oneself clean, at least for a very short period of time. We're going with the full roll because, well, you just, you know why. It's enough of that. She also has in here a multifunctional tool. Um, and what it is, is it's a um, 32 ounce, maybe 34 ounce water bottle. Inside that water bottle, she's got a whistle. She's got waterproof matches, all contained in the same unit. Has a lanyard over the top. She's got solar blankets. I think there's two or three in there. There's a small survival poncho. There's more waterproof matches with a striker in there. Um, there's a small first aid kit in it. There's a small Swiss Army style knife. Uh, pretty worthless, but nonetheless, it's got a toothpick and it's got tweezers on it, so that's important. It's got a cheapo flashlight in there. Um, but more than anything else is, and this had its own carabiner, came with it. But more than anything else, now she has the ability to carry more water with her. So she's got those 10 bottles there. She can, you know, take two of those bottles and pour them into here, polish one off to keep herself hydrated. And now she's got something that she can hook on the outside of the pack and she's easily got now basically a canteen, if you will. So this serves multiple purposes here and it's got lots of neat stuff in it. Again, those Mylar thermal blankets in there, they're an absolute necessity. The poncho, it's a great thing. I would recommend everybody have one of those. Up here in this top pocket, which is so oh, for your iPad or whatever, by the way, this is the Swiss Army backpack that we got from Sam's Club. Here she's got 80 feet, 80, that's 80 feet of 550 cord tucked in here, nice and neat like. Um, got a small can of hand sanitizer. Another nice thing about this, makes for a great fire starter as well uh, because of the alcohol that's in it. Um, but it's always nice to be clean if you're going to be preparing a meal. She's got my old Boy Scout cook stove set. Just pull it apart. It's got a little pan. She can fry up whatever she can find. She can cook these meals. She can make oatmeal. She can do anything primarily in this little pan. In here, she's got some P38 can openers, a small sewing kit, an extra lighter that's in there. Um, you know, so, and then I think there's a small sponge wrapped up in there as well that, so that she has the ability to clean the pots and pans 
um, after she's made that meal. So a nice way to be able to get a, you know, get a fire started, get a warm meal in you. Again, if you're down to the point where you're using this, it's going to be, a lot of this is going to be about morale. And morale is knowing that you've got everything you need for at least three, maybe four days to live pretty comfortably, you know, um, given the circumstances. So that's not a bad thing. I've got to make a, a sheath for this hatchet that I've given to her. Actually, I need to replace it because it's just an old POS, if you will. Um, I just wrapped some newspaper around it so that it wouldn't cut on anything on the inside. There's a young man out on the internet. Um, I believe his site is called Brave the Wilds. Um, he's a young guy. He's got to be probably 14 years old. But he's got some absolutely great ideas on his videos, and he talks about how to make a cover for this out of PVC pipe. Which, if you have time or you've been wondering how you're going to do something like this, go check out this young lad's video because that's what I'm going to use to make a cover for this one. That one I just had laying around. Another absolutely critical item is the handsaw. You know, you can hatch it away on wood all day long, but you need to conserve energy, and that's going to be critical. Uh, my wife and I have both tested this out. I carry one just like this in my kit. You could use it to saw two-handed. You can get a good, you know, firm grip on it multiple ways, but you can saw... Okay, sorry about that. Ran into a filming malfunction, but we're back on the road. Again, this is a great handsaw. Locks into place. You have to release the lever. Um, folds down inside itself, and again, it locks back into position. If you have to and you want to, you can tighten the bolt up because it's got a nut and screw scenario on it. Very, very handy thing to have with you. She also has another knife, uh, United Cutlery. Um, got these for several guys, well, for the guys in the family for Christmas. I actually picked one up for my wife. This is a little bit different type and style of knife. It's not what I would call a bushcrafting knife by any means. Um, but nonetheless, if you needed, to, if you needed to, to skin something, do something along those lines, extremely light, very nice, very sharp. All right, what else do we have in here? Also, we have the trusty old Coleman stove. Um, tell you what, this thing is worth its weight in gold. And it just comes together. You put these little rails down inside these little hooks that are right here on this. Um, sometimes you could kind of jiggle it around, but it's light and flexible enough to where you can get it into its position relatively quickly. And then it sits like this, and then it'll accept it the can of Sterno. Now you pop that open, you hit a torch to it, you can control the wind. Now you take my backpacking, you know, Cub Scout stuff. Now there's a stable, solid area where you can cook a fire, or I mean, you can cook your food, you can boil some water, you can do everything you want. Hell, you could do this in the back of your car because this is so stable, it's not going to flip over, it's not going to cause a fire. Um, down here in the bottom, the last thing that's down in here is just an old cheap tarp that I've been carrying around for 25, 30 years, but it makes great rain protection. Put it over your head. It'll cover the backpack on your back and everything. You're pretty much good to go. All right, so that's in that pack. The next one is this one here. Should have did. All right, guys, sorry. Back after, uh, well, I filled the video disc up and had to delete a few things and so we could continue filming. All right, well, we had just finished up with the handsaw on this, which is an absolute necessity. Wonderful thing. Cuts like a champ. You can't believe it. The next pocket back that we opened up, basically we have the venerable 8x10 tarp. It's got the camouflage color on the outside just because they were cheap, but it also has a safety orange on the inside should she need to signal or set up a distress or just to let people know where she is if we're out searching. There's another decent uh, look at it. Yes, it's still in the pack. Um, I'm going to say this. The kid um, from Brave the Wilds channel on YouTube has an excellent idea. And what he does is he takes some material very similar to this, cuts off a 7-inch piece, loops it over, sews it in the center so that there's a little loop on it. Then he takes the two splayed out pieces and super glues them or epoxies them in multiple places. There's like five of them on the outside of the tarp so that you can draw the tarp up around a tree and kind of open it up because no matter what you do it's always going to sag in the middle. So you put a few of these tabs on the outside like he did which was I thought was a great idea. Kudos to you young man. Um, so I'm going to do that to these tarps um, probably here sometime in the next couple of days. And that way then we can set them up in multiple configurations. Um, 
Uh, Dave Canterbury from um, the Pathfinder School. If you go online, look at his videos on YouTube. Um, he's got some excellent ideas and ways to set things up. Um, you know, he's just he's got a great program going out there with the Pathfinder uh, Schools LLC, I believe it is, out of Ohio, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but he's got some great information out there. I highly recommend his videos. Um, and in fact, it was watching some of his that, that made me go to a tarp as opposed to a tent um, in an effort to basically just get shelter. And that shelter is going to be so critical to get out of the wind, the snow, the rain, whatever the case may be. So we've got that tarp that's just tucked in here nicely in what would be the computer pouch on this particular backpack. We also have in here just six little ABS stakes. No, I have not yet taken them out of the cardboard, but you know, kind of helps keep them under control. They fit nicely into the pouch here. Here's the critical part. We've got, we showed you the 80 feet of uh, 550 foot line that we had in a, tucked away in another pocket, but down here I tied four of these. They're 20 feet long. I bought these big heavy um, welded shut rings at Lowe's. God, they were, I don't know, 70 cents a piece or something. But I attached them to 20 foot lines of uh, 550 cord so that she can string that, this um, tarp up. You know, she can, she can put a ridge line out. She can suspend all four corners from trees. She can do basically anything that she wants. With the hatchet, with the knife, and with that little saw, she can make a stake, and she can put an A-frame opening on it and tie the rest of this tarp down. And again, like I said, once I put these little um, tabs on the outside of the, the tarp, she'll be able to lift that up through, you know, up to a tree and create a lot of headroom in a very small shelter. So um, that's just, you can never have enough cordage. And so she's got another 80 feet, but broken down into 20-foot increments. Um, that's pretty much that's all in this particular pouch. Back here, she has a U.S. Army official emergency cold weather systems Gore-Tex jacket with a liner in it. Um, obviously, it zips up. It's waterproof. It breathes well. It's just another layer of insulation. She can put this over top of those coveralls that she had because this is a large enough size where she can have multiple layers on and still wear this basically a men's jacket that I got at the local Army surplus store. It's in fabulous shape. Um, and again, it's Gore-Tex and it's got a liner in it, so she'll be able to do a lot of things. It's lightweight, she'll be able to move around. It'll block the wind, it'll block the rain, it'll block the snow. It comes with a hood that's up on it, so you can put it up over top of your cap or whatever you're wearing. Um, so this is really, really a great idea. She's also got a pair of uh, um, black waterproof pants. Um, and again, those will breathe, those will shed rain, they'll shed snow. Um, they're a little more accessible in the back seat of her car just in case she needs them now because right now our temperatures are around 30 or so so it's not terribly cold but it is wet and nasty out so she's got them right where she can grab them out of the back seat of her SUV and she's ready to roll so um, yeah, otherwise we would have those folded up and stuck into this last pouch as well that only leaves one other pouch on here this is the other side where it opens up get some of this out of the way here down inside here, she's got a multi-tool because you just never know when you might need pliers, knives, screwdrivers, whatever the case may be. They're nice ones. I mean, they're just a cheap set, but um, I've kept them in my car for years on end. They haven't rusted. They've, they were a gift to me years and years ago. It's got a little saw blade on it. It's got all kinds of stuff in there. Just your basic multi-tool. You never know when you might need to cut some wire. You might need to grab a hold of something, pull it tight, undo a knot, whatever the case may be. You know, for whatever reason, everybody should carry a multi-tool in their pack. And it's just an absolute necessity. It's a toolbox and a small little thing. Next to that, she's also got a little Black & Decker light that I found on sale. These dudes run on a little um, AA battery. Might be two of them in there. Extremely bright little light. I'll flash it over and blind everybody. Um, but yeah, this works out nice. It's got a clip on it. You know, you can put it on the side of your hat. You can do a lot of different things with it. We've also got the headlamp that we saw earlier for hands-free operation. This little dude will light up the night, though. It is amazingly bright. It's got to be close to 75, maybe 100 lumens. Um, right here in the cover, don't know if you can see this, but uh, down inside this little elastic, They've got these little covers that go over the light. Now you can change the color of the light. This one happens to be green. There's a blue one and a red one that comes with it as well. That way, if you're out and about, you just uh, you don't really have to destroy your night vision at night. You can use any, whatever color lights it up. 
It makes it easiest for you to see. So we always carry flashlights, got a couple extra batteries as we displayed earlier. That's pretty much in it. There's two mesh pockets, stretch mesh pockets on either side that she can put water bottles into. Um, you know, this time of year if she takes off, she's going to put that jacket on, put it over the rest of the stuff that she has. She can stuff, you know, the remainder of the water bottles in the back here. She can move them up a compartment. She can do whatever she needs to do. She's got enough equipment and she's got enough food. Um, really, in all seriousness, she could go 72 hours with this um, in fat comfort, so to speak. Um, the rest of the time, I mean, you know, you could stretch this out for a week and you'd still survive, you'd still have food, you'd still be very, very comfortable in an unpleasant situation. Let's face it, by the time you're using this, something's not as it should be. Um, the world as you know it has changed a little bit. Um, it just could be an emergency, a national disaster, or, you know, a natural disaster rather. Um, but either way, she's ready to go. She can walk the 15, 20 miles from where she works back to our house out in the country. Um, I'm set up the same way in my vehicle. Um, basically, we have the exact same information or parts and pieces and equipment in both of our vehicles. Um, we both work in different areas. And we're both of us are 15 to 20 miles from home to where we work. So either way, a couple of days later, we would show up at the homestead. And everything would be fine. We might be a little chilly, we might be a little beaten up, but we're going to be alive and we're going to be well. And a lot of that is because we're just prepared for anything. Thanks guys, appreciate it. I won't bore you packing everything back up. You have a great day. Thanks for watching my channel. Have a good day.